Hello and thanks for joining me in this next tutorial for Filmwash Color Effects for DaVinci Resolve Volume 5. Now in this tutorial what we're going to be looking at is how we start to grade across a, a range of uh, sequences and basically how we put these uh, this into, into context in a, uh, in a larger workflow. So rather than looking at just correcting one clip at a time, we're going to look at a, a sample workflow for getting a, uh, an entire grade done uh, quickly. So the general uh, steps that I work with is to balance out all of the clips across the timeline so that they're, um, they've got good brightness and contrast uh, all balanced up with, uh, with decent white balance and are more or less consistent. And we can come in with our secondary color corrections there as well if we need to. Then once we're done with all of that, it's at that point near the end of the process uh, when we start to look at the uh, film wash. And even for those, for those different ones between the, uh, the film stock homage, the cross color and the cross process, there is also an order that I, uh, I tend to work with uh, there as well. So let's look through our clips here. Um, we've got a mixture of clips. We've got some that are uh, quite underexposed, some that are overexposed, and some have different, uh, different white balance points as well. So let's, uh, let's start to, to grade this up a little bit, just very, very quickly just to, to quickly balance it out. So what I'm going to do is just maybe, oh hang on, let's uh, bring in our parade and our vector scope here just to help us out a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit towards the, uh, the yellow side. So we'll add a bit, bit of blue, just in the three-way color wheels there. Quick look at the before and after. Take this to actual size. We can see it's a little bit, little bit better. What's what's going on with it? So we can see our wall is balanced up a lot better now. Uh, we can look at that on the vector scope as well. So instead of being over towards the uh, the yellow, slightly off center, that's now sitting back in the center there, sort of yeah, letting me know that it's been neutralized out a bit more. Cool. This shot. Well, we'll see what uh, auto color can do for us and if I so if I press command and a that will try and do an auto balance for me still a, a little bit hit and miss actually so it's a bit cool for my liking I'm sorry a bit too warm for my liking there still so let's add again add a bit of blue into it so that we're sort of in the same kind of ballpark here, kind of like that, that moody look going on there. And the auto color on this really blasts things out quite a bit, depending on which frame we're at. So if we go to the, the start frame, really blast things out. We go to the end frame, we get completely different story. So you know, to my mind, auto color is uh, can be a bit sketchy. And this is overexposed, so we'll take the blacks, highlights. Mids, take the saturation way down, knock that back a lot. It's just from a, a, a mood, so it's okay if it's not perfect. I'll just correct that one up as well on number five. Check out the reds on the wood. Try and keep that feeling across there as well. Of course, now our shot's balanced up uh, a little bit better. Uh, this one here could do with a bit of extra crunch. Get a quick before and after. Before and after. Cool, I like that. So now what I want to do is I want to apply a film wash film stock across the uh, entire range of clips. And we saw in the last tutorial how we could 
you know, uh, do everything on one clip and then then basically copy and paste in over the rest of the uh, the rest of the clips. And that method works fine if you if you're only working on a, a few clips and you've only got a couple of the other color corrector nodes going on as well. But if you've got some quite complex secondaries uh, or secondary corrections going on, also, you know things start to get a little bit tricky. So this is where coming into the track makes all the difference. Now, when we start applying corrections to the uh, the track itself, every it goes across the entire track we've got going on here, not just a single clip. But what we unfortunately can't do at the moment is we can't just go add correction and have it show up in our track here. But actually the way to get the film wash across an entire track is still fairly straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go display node graph. So right click on the one I want, go display node graph here. I can see it's got you know, just a single node going on there. So I'm going to add one node and my corrector. I'm then going to hook that up to the input and the output using the top, zoom that in, using the round connectors here. And then all I'm going to do is simply drag and drop from my node graph over the top there. And that has now applied that look to the entire track. So if I really ramp that up a lot, take that up to uh, all the way to one, you can see no matter where I am on the track, it's applied it right there. Let's just base memory that and take that, uh, reset that back to zero. And we can do that with any of the, the power grades we have here. So if I go display node graph again, drag that over the top there, and we can see that's now applied it to the entire range as well. So that's cool. So anything we do in the track gets applied across the entire range of clips. Now let's look at one where we need to do multiple nodes here. We're going to go with the Fuji FP100C and we'll do display node graph here. Now this is slightly trickier. We need to add four correctors and one layer mixer. So here I am going to add a serial, which is this, which is this one here. I'm going to add a layer mixer. there and by doing it this way we we don't have to do any more sort of remapping here and then just go add before current and then add before current again so there's our five there that's the most complicated uh, node graph you're going to see out of uh, film wash for uh, volume five and then all we do is we drag the values to their corresponding node. And that now works as it should do. Cool. Now I don't happen to uh, think that that one looks like we need it to in this particular case. So we'll just delete all of those. And here maybe I'll come to add a bit of a cross process. Here, we'll do the same thing. So we'll add another serial. We'll display our node graph. Let's bring that over the top there. And then we can mix that back as we want to. Cool. And I think that's got a nice raw look to it now. Cool. And if I want to, I can even just apply a, a simple vignette. So add another serial node there, come into my window, flip the circular on, flip it to outside instead. Make it a whole load softer, make it even bigger still in the size here. Let me just come to the curves. Just bump that down. 
Turn that off so we can see what we're doing here. Cool, and let's look at the uh, before. The after, before and after. On the various shots. And I quite like the way that's that's worked out there. Cool. Well, that was just a brief overview of how we can start to fit uh, film wash into a uh, into a wider workflow and correct across ranges rather than just uh, uh, individual clips. If you do have any questions or you've done any uh, interesting projects using film wash, then uh, please let me know at curiousturtle.com. But thanks for now, and I'll talk to you again soon.